Hey guys, CYHD here, and I am back with another reaction video. And today, I'm going to be reacting to, after the fact, uh, Inspiration Manifestation. Sorry about that, I just needed to remember that. <laughs> Anyways, this is another after the fact video by MLP Silver Quill. And, and yes, it's been a while since I've reacted to this series. And yes, we're, we're like... We have a lot of episodes to catch up on it, and he's on to season five right now, but only on to half of it. Um, he's doing like extra ones, you know, that has to do with s some ponies, like a character's personality from the show, and uh, yeah, I don't think I have anything else. So yeah, anyways, let's get this started. In three, two, one, go. Uh. Hey Silver, I got your mail again and what happened? Keyframe? Game, new one. Commander Firebrand's idea. So this starts what? off with but, oh. another festival. And oh. <laughs> I think we found Fiery Joker. He kneweth not what he'd unleash. So how many town festivals are there? A lot. Wow. Uh, okay. Starbucks? Starbucks and then we can make with the reviewing. Oh, do we gotta? Well, we can always do another drinking game. Every time really? we see Rarity, <laughs> Rarity. Them and her designs, take a shot. No, I want to live. Get back here. Yeah, get back to her. Oh yeah, if you guys remember, uh, really a good idea to come sorry about that, if you guys remember what happened to the last reaction video, I was like really quiet, uh, well, almost quiet, so I'm gonna have the microphone in my hand, close to my mouth. To sit in on a panel Bay Area, world, Brony, Spectre. Staff members talked about how MLP is one of the few cartoons to feature a female dominant hmm, I think they're talking about Babscon. When I asked about the challenges for writing a male character like Spike in a female dominant setting, they shared I know. A about how they abused him. And they did it a lot. They said there simply wasn't room for Spike. In a series with six strong female leads, it's already crowded without focusing on yet another character. And well, they have oh, seven now. <laughs> Secret by excess. I love that episode. About him, yet he only causes the problem, and it's usually up to the main six to find the solution. I have an emotional connection to this episode as well. So, as a creator, I heard that uh, Key Keyframe totally does uh, Applejack voice. The internal conflict she has in this episode. As the town prepares for yet another festival, Rarity is preparing a puppet stand to entertain the foals. And <laughs> yeah, definitely a puppet stand. Self. How could it not be? You're the one making it. But Rarity got so caught up in making the puppet theater aesthetically pleasing, she forgot to balance that aesthetic with functionality. Like the puppet master, or who I like to call Snips in third. Well, of course, it is on a stand, so you could have just took the stand off or took it off the stand. Rather than be constructive, he opted only to accentuate the negative. Well, unfortunately, that's how a lot of clients can be in real life. Hmm. Still, Rarity takes it in stride. <laughs> no, no, no. Is that really the best way to deal with? Hmm? Right. Never mind. You know, the writers probably <laughs> now he's awake. Conflict. How do you mean? Well, think about it. They put their I mean, did you hear that sound effects? <laughs> that was like a Mario one-up. Hard criticism without any regards for a <laughs> true, true friend helps oh, a friend yeah, in need. A friend mean, will uh, be there to yeah, help them you. see. Well, yes. The writers, animators, and directors try to bring the thing <sighs> they themselves want to watch into a oh, God. Why did I bring myself into this? As much quality as they can muster. Any pony, but, oh. visual artist, musician, writer, or content creator in general, knows the difficulty when they just can't get what they imagine <sighs> how it looked or sounded in their head. Just because the attendees are young doesn't mean they don't deserve my very best creative work. 
This episode mm, pretty has much. a very meta subtext, yet they succeed in not making it completely one-sided, of they're right and perfect, while the critics are wrong and idiots. Hmm, I hadn't thought yep, about that. Yep, definitely way. idiots. However, I feel it's important to note that, even though it's not fair, time and hard work don't always equal recognition. People will criticize the final product. You know, I would, um, eat ice cream if, you, if I am upset about something. Since we can't control how people act, the only thing we can do is suck it up, learn from the experience, and move forward. And this is one of the benefits of Rarity's character, more than any other member of the main stage. You know, back in and Season 1, Episode 14, Rarity was kind of like Twilight when she had that crazy mane. So Spike, the ever in getting the, decides to do the only stress taking. And traverse the Everfree Forest to visit the ruins of the Oh, yeah, that library. I remember you that. Know, I'm calling it right now. Hey, Everfree. Hey, hey, Everfree. You're lame. The fire swamp and the scariest cave in Equestria called, and they've decided that they're way more dangerous than you. Forest of lame. Think you'll regret that later? Uh, why would you say that? What? Oh! Yeah, that vine! Thought. Anyway, I love this scene of Spike searching for the book. With him and Aloysius' banter towards one another, the cleaner look at the library being a subtle- You know, if I did a collab with, uh, several quill, I'd be like, Oh, how many episodes have you seen in the show? We don't know how you do this! Finding these things. <laughs> Spike. I have no comeback for that. Fourth wall break. No, no. Sakura? The inspiration manifestation, nearly dying, giving Owlish's a heart attack, and gives it to Rarity, who, while initially hesitant, accepts the book. Only Spike didn't die. He watched where he was going. The manifestation of makeover and fixing her faulty puppet theater. But all's not well as Rarity's magic isn't her usual blue variety. In fact, it looks very different, with a thicker and more opaque aura. Usually, a pony's magical aura matches her eyes. Well, green seems to be reserved for evil magic. Well, definitely green isn't Rarity's color. But, oh, sweetie Belle. You are saying, honey? Oh, but, uh, sorry, ladies. Anyway, Spike trails after Rarity as she oh, makes wait, improvement. Oh, wait, is he insulting Sweetie Belle? Or at least she thinks she's making an improvement. Going back to form over function, Rarity's simply making things that she thinks look nice, but aren't what the town ponies want or need. Try that one over there. Uh, no, no, that leads to a... Shoe closet? Back in my bats review, I mumbled something about how the yeah that wasn't what flourish I wanted, problem, which was an abuse. In almost every case in this show, a magical solution has backfired, as it should. If you could just solve all your problems with a quick spell, there would be no <sighs> conflict. Spike tries to talk things out with Rarity without actually stating the problem. While sometimes this can work, and I won't lie saying that I've never utilized this tactic before, it is not the correct way to go about this situation, no matter if the person you're talking to is someone you care about or not. And Spike sees this because it does nothing but encourage Rarity's addiction to the magic. It's also interesting how while Spike would usually be- Well, Rarity magic, is addicted to a lot of magic, but dark magic! It's really showing some development from him from season one. Now here's something odd. With all the debate over Pinkie Pie's humor this season, <laughs> here's a scene that may be one of the funniest jokes in the series. <laughs> happy, happy day huh? Yeah, that's how. How's it? That's not how the party was set up. Speechless. The mind boggles. <laughs> yeah, Pinkie Pie was speechless. It boggles me that they finally brought Octavia back, or is she an Octavia clone? <laughs> <laughs> Octavia? So we have a Spike-focused episode where each of the main six has at least one short comedic moment. That's a nice balance. I'll definitely remember Fluttershy and Pookie's reaction. <sighs> Except for Twilight. Welcome. I guess the only ponies who didn't make a big impression were Applejack and Granny. Heck, they could sell that card off, buy a new one, and make a nice profit. The main six are trying to find out who is causing all this commotion. Never realizing that their one friend, who is a unicorn, who is the most creative of the group, and whose designs are extremely similar to the designs of the mishaps is in present. But I will give that to the chaos, and at that point, Rarity's designs were becoming farther than her usual perfection, to say the least. Princess Twilight, the gazebo has been turned into solid crystal, and two ponies are- <laughs> I forgot that Mayor Mayor was in this episode! Congratulations, Mayor. You still have a role. Asking a royal to fix your problems. Spike tries multiple. You know, Cassie Wesselock did a d does a great uh mirror mirror voice. With the help of Alicious, he finally nabs the book and eats it. 
I'm actually thinking of the Discworld books. Yeah, you can't eat books. Where an enchanted you were choked to death on one. Held the most magical book in reality. It gave if someone eats death, one in real life. I can only imagine how Spike is gonna you know, if I did see that in real life, I would just flip. Have we really uh, Spike, did you fall in? In a show about candy-colored ponies. In the most literal way possible. <laughs> and as Rarity completes her crusade de fabulous, she turns her green-lit eyes towards the rest of Equestria, which means that Spike has exhausted all options. She won't back down, he can't stay silent, and stealing the book didn't work. It's time for Spike to do something for which he hasn't had an opportunity. Criticize Rarity. I should have told you the truth at the very beginning, but I didn't because I was trying to be a supportive friend. <sighs> But instead, I let you be well, Spike, you're always supportive. I take that and it's finished. She's now the rarest. The rarest? Shut up, you've made worse. At least I don't need shades to make bad wordplay. Smasher. Putting aside the romantic debate, Spike is needed to grow up enough that he's not afraid to speak the truth to a pony he admires. This is a nice, sincere moment, and the first time that Spike has truly solved a problem he created. His spoken truth breaks the spell, and Rarity delivers the moral of the day. You should never be afraid to tell me the truth. Pretty much, no. Friends, remember? Hmm. So after Spike writes in the diary, Twilight comes in, and whoa, Twilight! Way to show the fun of princess them, eh? Also, yeah, uh, definitely. Mentioning Luna and Cadence helping out was a nice touch. Princess Celestia is not mentioned, but hey, somebody's got to be on the throne. Seniority has its privileges, and that's Inspiration Manifestation, the second mm. of three Spike-centric episodes this season. Oh, I'm not really sure I'd count Power Ponies. Well, I love this episode well, immensely. Well, I definitely Luna think Luna Spike is a great character. He definitely is. Probably some of the best pacing this season. It he makes really good choices and and always and loyal to every to single one, one of his friends. Say, the moral is what truly sells it for me. That while criticisms are hard to receive and even hard to give, <sighs> they are necessary for all of us to grow. Whether you be an artist, a singer, or heck, even an analyst. And for that, this episode you know, I saw a bunch of reactors um react to this episode. Also in my top five of the series. And now, they pretty much loved it. Rogers assertion that there's no room for Spike. I think this episode proves otherwise. Yes, the main six had a definitely goal, proves. None of them were forgotten. The show can still be called My Little Pony, and it will still focus on the main six. Yet I really do hope that they'll focus more on the world and not just on the click. Also, there's a debate going online that the dark magic of the book could be seen as a metaphor for substance abuse. Not so. Well, we start off with justification. If I wasn't supposed to have it, it wouldn't be so easy to get. Followed by initial rush of the first time user. Oh, I have never been better. This book you've given me is amazing. Then concealment. Would that be a fun little secret for the three of us to share? Abuse. Your constant praise and adoration driving me to even greater heights until there isn't an inch of Equestria that hasn't been utterly transformed by my creative genius! And even taking away the source doesn't cut off the addiction. It's only when a close friend holds an intervention that the user starts addressing the problem. I'm so excited! I'm so excited! Psychopath Rarity! This may be a case of <laughs> more mean than the writer intended, but is that a bad thing? Saved if by the bell reference. Kidding kids, then I'm all for it. Just no more town festivals, please, please, pretty please. Speaking of substance abuse, how much coffee have you drunk? I don't know, a few, a dozen, a few bakers dozen dozen. Whoa! But hey, I don't have a headache anymore, and I'm feeling really pumped and jazzed. And I don't know why people say jazz anymore because it's really cool. And I think I'll just go for a walk. Knock him out! Knock him out! He's getting real fuzzy. Why are you fuzzy? Please stop being fuzzy. Hey, who's that? That's a funny looking pony. It's all drawn real funny. I'm standing on two legs. Knock him out! This is all very strange. Please don't make it seem like I'm out! And, oh, he's gone. Sugar Rush. I'm sure he'll be back to talk about the Equestria games. Uh, I'm Keyframe. Me and Quill looked at point A, point B, and everything in between. Thanks for watching, every pony. Now I gotta get out of here before people start blaming me. Meanwhile. Really? My liquor back. Generation two of My Little Pony.
Well then, <laughs> I have no words. You know, I did think that inspiration manifestation was a great episode. Um, I saw a lot a lot of reactors react to this episode. Even Ranger Bravo, Shemel nineteen eighty five. Sorry about that. And pretty much Laddick, so that's all. I, I mean, I can't remember if I saw other reactors react to this episode. I might have to go back and look at what the reactions were. I mean, I mean, Shanmul did like that moment where when Spike hugged Rarity at, at almost the end. Yeah, I did think that part was cute too, man. Well, I don't know if you're watching this, Shanmul, but the episode, I loved it too. But anyways, uh, that was a really good video, even though I was talking too much in some of the parts. <sighs> and that was a pretty much unexpected ending. I mean, you drink too much coffee, and then you talk too much, and then you just disappear. And then you appear in My Little Pony Tales. Well, AKA, MLP Generation 1 or 2, I don't know. Anyways, I'm gonna get it in here, guys. Once again, guys, thanks for watching, and... Ahoy!